Hey, this is Roland Junk again from ePlan. As you know, efficient engineering is when a plan becomes ePlan. So I want to show you two things today. Okay, one is a very new Element Professional Plus that can uh, be added to your existing ePlan, Electra P8, and Pro Panel. And I want to actually get this whole thing started a little bit with my ePulse. ePulse is our cloud where everyone, here you can see I'm in Microsoft Edge, and I'm looking at this ePulse, and in particular at the eView. The idea here is to share and view different projects with the whole community, not only ePlan users. Here, I open an existing project and I can view that project from the first page down to the reports, table of contents. Now, I per personally already know what I want to comment. There's something down the road here in the assembly process that I want to change. So very specifically, um, there is something in here that I want to change uh, to win some space. Let me just zoom in here. And I will actually uh, mark it up using the red lining here. So I'm going to mark it up by putting a square rectangle in the area where I think this should be done. And my red lining title is just a smaller ground bar. And I believe we have an option here uh, that everyone knows. Um, please use our standard option six screws instead. So my team knows what I'm talking about because we have several standard options in our project. So by doing this, I am right now communicating that I want this smaller ground bus bar. I could even change its status to being approved. So please go ahead. Please go ahead. No effect on project dollars. So for free, for free, more or less, of course. And now it's actually out there. And the idea is behind the scene, we actually thought about different ways of how a drawing can be done using parametrics, using options. So here, this is an interesting case story where we actually dig really deeper into it using PNIDs, pre-planning. So all kinds of options that actually generate the panel based on some options built into a graphic, the PNID diagram. I will show you something even simpler that is part of the Element Professional Plus. It's right in ePlan. Let's jump to ePlan right away, okay? So let's see here, uh, this is ePlan with a docked page of the ePlan data portal, a docked page of the eView. And let's see, once it's docked inside of ePlan, you can see what is approved. So of course, simple things like this one here could be just on this page here, a simple alignment that we want. So easy, you can do it very quickly. Just you know, move these down. There we go, have them nice and straight aligned, maybe just one at a time. And this within the revision management is something that is totally easy because now you can actually complete that page and say, okay, I moved the 24 VDC, zero VDC, and that's it, okay? And this is the third modification on this page. It will register this as a modification, and I can go even in this case here to the review case here, the um, align uh, cross-reference, and I could actually change its status if I wanted to. But let's jump right away into the smaller ground bar. Let's see what that is. This is what I have here. And this is what we just did together in the eView. And the idea here is, of course, something really simple, is to show you here the, um, the difference of what we want is we want a smaller ground bar bus bar. Now, interesting is within our standard options, this reflects here in the uh, schematics, if you want, in the panel layout. 
and it's an option. So an option is very easy to trigger because you just open the navigator of your options. Here we can see pan six screws or pan 12 screws. And if I choose one or the other, you can see the part number here changes. It even goes as far as changing down in the parts that are assigned on the counterpiece, which is in the schematic somewhere here we have a part number that is actually being assigned to uh, each of these ground bus bars. So here, more precisely, if we actually highlight the invisible stuff, you can see that we've switched from a 12 to a 6. Now, what this may actually cause is that we may have to reroute, because of course the routing is a little bit different, so we will have to reroute the objects. But that just recalculates the wires uh, in itself. So select the routed components. I can select these here, and you will see the routing will actually go. Recalculate all the wires that were connecting to the previous ground bus bar, and it will simply reroute and recalculate this uh, automatically. So here we have a new ground uh, bus bar system. As we can see, it's now connected. I will talk about routing a little bit later in a different one, but really what I wanted you to see is that based on a simple checkbox, my option was actually corrected. Now, as a second item is the routing itself. As I said, I'm gonna open and correct the routing for this particular object here. So I will be opening an existing project. Another interesting feature that you will see at the moment is this particular feature here called uh, the project management multi-user option also included in the element professional plus which actually allows me to create different groups and categories responsibilities within a project and I can simply say okay I want to work on the entire project of course if I work on the entire project I will lock down the entire project and I can do everything I want as usual but if we are with multiple users working on this I may not want to go too deep into this, and I don't want to work on the power and the circuit breakers, on the controls, on the documents, on the motors, and whatever. I want to be very precise, and I want to just work on a smaller section, maybe the motors, maybe a different section. You can choose here which section you want to use. So in my case, I want to work on the power section because I have here some power circuits, and in my layout, I have basically my panduit and this panduit here. So what I did in this particular panduit here is I went and defined actually some uh, connection points. So we can see different connection point directions. And this was actually not on the panduit drawing. So I had to create the macro here and I will update the macro itself. So control uh, in my case K and it just updates it. Just to show you quickly how this was done, I still have here the other macro that wasn't done yet, the uh, Panduit 12 pin, and I will show you. Uh, originally, as it comes from the Panduit website, so 000, this is not an obligation, I just actually do this as a habit, and we can now zoom in, front view, side view, as you can see, it's all created, so on the front view, um, I can actually rotate this a little bit if you want to. I don't have to. I will basically now define what we call here connection points. Now, the first thing, as you can see down there, it says select area to define connection point area. This is the direction. And then I can go in here and say, okay, this will be my pin one. This will be my screw number two. Then the center here will be my screw number three. The center here will be my screw number four, right? So you basically define here four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five. There you go. So the magic of, of course, videos is that I'm already at 12. Now, this means I have now 12, 12 connections nicely connected here. And you can see that most of them are nicely connected, maybe a few adjustments, maybe the depth here, 
that has to be the same. The other thing is maybe where do you want to move this? Move this down, copy and paste. And what you can also do is put some extra length if you want to, or some extra stripping length. It's all possible here. You can say, okay, let's add 0, 0,25 inch for stripping, or you can even go with six millimeters. So this is basically what I do. So six millimeters converted, as you can see, I don't have to really do a calculation. Then it's the minimum gauge is uh, 14. It goes to four. That's the biggest one I can copy and paste. This is basically the min max connection points that can be connected to this. Uh, this is pretty much what we do here at the connection points. And of course, when you're finished, you just generate the macro itself. Now this being done will give you a complete different way to look at this here when you do the routing again, because once you update your uh, macro, so you reposition it the next time around, um, it will actually do the routing correctly. As you can see, all our elements, most of our elements have the connections. So you can see finally that the connection is now as we have created it with the new connection points. And if I run the connections, we can see that most of these connections actually do connect correctly, unless we have something that wasn't registered correctly. I think it's here the move down. Uh, this is the position of where it goes. So whether you pick up the routing path down below, or the routing path up above, and you can see it actually works perfectly well. The one that is now missing right now is the pin number six or seven, but it works perfectly like this. So the routing can be very nicely controlled, even though the manufacturer on the data portal did not do all the details. So here we saw some routing, we saw some options modules, we saw some um, multi-user uh, defined working sections uh, coming with the element uh, professional plus. So a very simplistic way to parameterize your project. So this was again Roland Jung from ePlan and my target today was to show you a little bit more about the element professional plus that is an option or even something that will uh, be great to have for anyone that has an ePlan license. So just wanted to, uh, to show you this. And again, this was here just the uh, view display connections, directions we don't necessarily need. Um, so thank you.